guys. So, if you can tell, right now I am currently tracing a Steven Universe picture. Michelle, why the hell are you tracing a picture? Oh, I thought you were an artist, not a tracer. Well, I was doing this to try to learn Holly Blue Agate's anatomy. This is something I feel a lot of people should do. As you see, I do not actually trace the picture. I trace it, have it in the side corner, while I try to understand how her anatomy works. Fun fact, I realized after doing this with her anatomy, Holly Blue Agate has fucking no stomach. I know she's an alien, but it goes, like, right from chest to hips. I just noticed that. And I find that funny, because she has got nothing there. And I mean, yeah, I guess gems don't have to eat, but just a fun little fact. I feel like this is something every artist should do when they're trying to learn different body types, is I do not support tracing in the fact that you trace something and then actually draw over it. I support tracing in learning the fucking anatomy, because when you take basic anatomy classes, there's this, uh, there's this little, like, I, I forget what it's called, but my friend took a uh, life drawing class and she was telling me about it, where you draw the skeleton on one piece of paper. Then you get tracing paper and you put it over the skeleton that you've drawn. And then you draw the muscle structure on top of the skeleton. And then on top of that picture, you get another piece of tracing paper. So you understand how to draw the form after you've drawn the skeletal and the muscles. And that's technically tracing because you're learning the anatomy. But... When I feel like you're learning anatomy, it's completely different and completely fine to do. Obviously, don't trace and do it as a picture, but especially when you want to get into cartoons, like I prefer to have, I my style is fluctuating a lot, but I tend to have it be a like Disney-esque 90s cartoon kind of mixture with just bits of me in it. I, I, I'm terrible at describing style. I'm not a professional in that aspect. But... Uh, as years have gone on, I'm trying to learn how to draw different body types, which I feel every artist should. And I really, really hate when artists say it's super easy to draw diverse body types. People need to stop saying that, you know, if you're a fatty like me, that it should be super easy to draw. It's not, okay? Like, people need to stop saying that because they're like, oh, well, diverse body types shouldn't be a challenge. They are. They are very challenging. Everybody is different. But what do you see in the media? Even Western and anime. Think about it. You know, like when you see Futurama. Yeah, they have diverse body types. But Leela and Amy are the sexy chick. And they're played up to be the sexy chick. You see it in a lot of other things. You see it in shows with parents and stuff. Very rarely do they actually diversify and do different body types. Unless they are like a show like family guy and even then it's usually to, for comedy it's not like because they're actual people or you know you'll see like cartoons if they try to do it and I think that's why I also really enjoy Steven Universe is you see body types of all shapes and sizes and especially with the gems since they're fucking aliens they can get away with a lot of stuff like I said how Holly Blue apparently doesn't have a fucking stomach um the reason for this might be like, Michelle, what are you doing? I thought you only make original characters. I make fan characters too. They're fun. Um, I was recently actually uh, re-watching some Steven Universe episodes and I've been noticing more and more art. And there's this really good artist on YouTube, uh, the Zodiac Lord, who does a lot of Steven Universe drawings and content and uh, Fuse Day Tuesdays is I think what they call it and Corrupt Day Mondays. Totally check out their channel. Their stuff is really cool. And I was thinking about it. And they were bringing up in their fusion poll how, like, a lot of people don't have, you know, canon gems in it, or they make fan, fan gems. And then it got me thinking of, like, the fam the Famethysts, and we saw all the rose quartz being bubbled, and I see lots of pearls. And so in the community, I noticed lots of people like to make rose quartzes, jaspers, pearls, and lots of Famethysts, uh, rubies, sapphires. But we've gotten so many new characters in the show, so many new gems, and I, I find it ironic because I actually do have a, a gem Sona, uh, Topaz, but that was before Topaz was, like, canonized. I got the colors pretty on point, though. I was, like, super proud of that when I saw Topaz on the show. Sorry, little little self thingy for me, but I was super excited when I saw Topaz's colors because I'm like, oh my god, it looks like my Topaz. Skin color, body type, nowhere close. Not even the gem placement, but the colors, I got the colors pretty spot on, so... 
That made me happy. But I was thinking, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself. I am going to make an agate. Because in the uh, song, you know, What's the Use of Feeling Blue? Uh, Yellow Diamond explains in the song, it's a quick little thing, which is like, you know, uh, a lap uh, agate terrifies and a lapis terrifies. And so I was thinking about our agate, Holly Blue, we've seen, and I'm like, if an agate terrifies, well, that makes sense. She's kind of like the warden of this zoo, but why is she working at a zoo? Shouldn't she be like a bodyguard or something? So because of that, I was thinking and thinking, and... Then the tr- when the trial episodes happened, uh, spoilers for people who aren't caught up in Steven Universe at the time of making this, the date is uh, 6 2017 So, like, we've already, we we're pretty caught up. If, if you're caught up, if not, I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil it. But uh, Zarkon, or Zorkon, I'm probably going to pronounce her name wrong, explains, like, oh, where was her pearl? Where were her agates? And so I'm like, see, agates are fucking bodyguards. So I wanted to make an agate. And I looked up about agates, and agates have different colors and different variations. And so that's when I found Moss Agate, which is this green agate which I based my character around. And I tried to make her look similar. And as you can tell, I tried to copy the pose from the animal, the, an the animal structure, the anatomy structure I made. But it looked so stiff and unmoving and just not natural. And so I decided to have her legs closed and give her some bigger hips. Uh, I feel like I should draw her a couple more times before I can actually get it done. Um, another thing with Mossy Agate is I don't personally want to call her a gem Sona because to me, any and this is just a personal thing, with anything with Sona at the end of it, I feel like it should like either represent you or look like you, and Ma doesn't doesn't do that for me. So that'd be fun, the whole Jared character variation. And um, as you see, there's a couple of things I kept in here that I usually cut out of my normal uh, speed draws and speed paints, which is one, the sketching process, because I felt it was important. And you guys can see why I tend to cut out my sketching process, because I, I do lots of edits and changes and tweaks and stuff. But another one is this freaking program crashed like five times in the... Uh, in the making of the sketch and the inking, which is why the inking is completely cut out and I just went right into the coloring because I just, I just didn't have time for it. Didn't want it to crash again. So that just happens sometimes. But uh, I feel like I should probably explain a couple things. This was actually originally gonna be like a character creation slash color study video thing. But I feel like this isn't a good example of that. I'm gonna try to do another one in the future, whenever that is. Also, um, I want to apologize for the audio and music in my last video, the you know where I answer you guys' questions, because for some reason, in editing, it was fine. Like, the music was not as loud as it ended up being. I tried tweaking it, and the music is really quiet on my program, but in the video, it's really loud. So I'm going to try to keep it to a minimal here, do a little test run. If it's too loud, I'll just cut the music out. I don't really want to because I feel it adds something, but if I have to, I will. And yeah, I just want to explain that. And this is uh, just a fun little color study. Um, if you guys ever want to make like gemsonas, characters, whatever, and you're trying to think of good color palettes, this is a little trick that I do. Is uh, You will need Photoshop for this because I don't know of any other program that does this. And I'm, I know any version of Photoshop will do it. And I believe there is a version of Photoshop, I think it's Photoshop like 2 or something, that is free on the Adobe website, or it was free for the longest time. I also know if you are a college student, even if you're not an art major, you can get like a super duper discount on Photoshop, just, you know, look into that stuff. But uh, if there's a certain color palette you're trying to get for a character, or even a picture, anything, find the picture Try to look up, like, an aesthetic photo and a nice high-res aesthetic photo of the colors that really pop out to you. Go to Photoshop and then go to the pixelate function and make it so the pixels are really big. And then, as you can see in the corner, that was actually a moss agate. I just fucked with the crystallization to get the color so I could easily color pick it. I will go more in-depth onto that process when I do eventually make my color theory video. But this is just a little fun video I felt like doing and talking about because I haven't done one of those in a while. Ooh, excuse me. And I also wanted to explain that uh, I'm sorry I was a big nervous wreck last week because I was just still kind of in shock when I was making the audio for that video. 
because this is a, I've gained a lot of subscribers in a very short, short amount of time. And I really, really am happy that you guys like my content to subscribe and be a part of this. And so that's why I sounded like a little nervous mess. And I've tried taking some advice onto my audio and stuff that isn't going to break my bank. And yeah, I, I feel like that's it. If I, if I went on the uh, meet you tangent game, let's turn it into a drinking game. A couple of people commented on that. It's like every time she goes on a tangent or says, um, or like, take a shot. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a fun drinking game. You guys are going to get smashed before the end of it. Uh, yeah. I also, there are a couple of videos I plan on making in the future, but they are going to be a little time in the making. I feel I should explain a little more. Um, I want to make a commission how-to video and not like a how-to, like, this is how you're supposed to do commissions. It's like how I do commissions and what I've learned doing commissions as a full-time career for four years, because that's what I've been doing. Um, you know, I, I also plan on making a people who scam artists video. A lot of people, I've gotten some notes and emails about people who are apparently not too happy that I said that artists scam people when realistically anybody can scam anybody. Like that's why they're called con artists. They don't have to just be an artist. They could be anything. And I just really felt like doing the artist one first because I never see anyone talk about it. And I have a lot of artist friends who, like, when I brought it up to them, they were really weirdly taboo about it. And I thought it was odd. They, they like, were got really, really fucking defensive. Like, no, artists don't screw people. People screw artists. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've been screwed over by customers, too. I've been screwed over by people. But artists openly screw over people, too. And uh, thanks to that video, like, a lot of artists who I didn't even know were scammers came to light. And people were commenting on comment chains about how, oh my god, you got scammed by this person? So did I. And so I'm happy that that came to light so that way more people feel like they're not alone in it. Because I know a lot of people who've been scammed by artists and they feel like they're alone. They feel like, uh, oh, this artist still works hard and has a good following. Maybe I was a one chance shot. And then you see, thanks to that video, that uh, it's not. A lot of artists scam people. It's a sad truth. Not all artists do, but a lot do, just like a lot of people try to scam artists. It's a sad part of life, and just, uh, yeah. Well, I feel like I've rambled enough, and i talked about this picture enough. Uh, if you guys like it, just thanks. I, I, I'm getting a lot of comments on my art, and that's a story for me. So, I've been rambling enough, and hopefully I don't have to cut too much out. So, as always, I will. See you.